Okay, now we're going to talk about depth information, how we process the world in 3D. And this is a major source of optical illusions because uh, that third dimension is out there. It's uh, We only see the two dimensions against our retina. And so we have to do a lot of assuming and inference to understand kind of what is out there in three dimensions. We've lost an entire dimension there. And so one of the most powerful cues that is uh, available in the real world is this uh, convergence and divergence of the eyes. So the ability to focus your eye on a particular kind of point in space. And when you've done that, then you kind of know by principle of triangulation, how far away that point is in space. And this at this point, the image on the two eyes will be kind of perfectly aligned. But what's interesting is if things are closer from that point of convergence, um, then you'll get actually an increasing kind of offset between the two different eyes. And similarly, the offset goes the other way if you go kind of uh, objects that are further away in depth. And so there's a further cue there against uh, of the along the retina of these kind of differences in how those light rays project into uh, the eyeballs um, for a given focal point. And that is what we call binocular disparity. And these 2D stereograms, auto stereograms, allow us to kind of see these 3D disparity driven images without uh, even having to have separate images presented to the two eyes. And so standard like 3D movies, uh, if you have those 3D glasses, uh, the whole point of those is that they allow you to kind of put a, one image on one eye and another image on the other eye. And those disparities, those differences, those offsets between the images on those two eyes is how we primarily see kind of uh, depth information. And what's amazing about this is by, by focusing your eyes in the depth and further in depth, you can actually get those two different images on those on your two eyes. Um, and it's uh, printed in such a way here that those alignments then create a, a, a varying level of depth image that you see. And it's pretty amazing. It takes a lot of work to focus on these things. Uh, and once you get the skill though, it's, it's, it's worth it. So, so give it a try. You can look these things up online, audio stereograms, and you can read about how to do it. But basically you just wanna go wall-eyed. Then there's a whole set of monocular depth cues that uh, don't involve comparisons between the two different eyes. So these are available with only one eye, uh, and these include this kind of classic linear perspective uh, where you now automatically see that thing as larger than this same exact line length here uh, because of this perspective line receding in the distance. There's also kind of a texture effect taking place here. Uh, there's, uh, you get blocking effects, occlusion, all kinds of different cues that tell you what is further away and what's closer up. These cues are actually quite powerful and the presence of these cues actually render those kind of 3D glasses sort of more or less superfluous. You get that kind of more compelling lifelike depth experience, but still even with just, you know, the regular sort of seeing a, a regular 2D image, you have a lot of depth information. You're never quite surprised about what, what what's where. So we do a really good job of interpreting these depth cues. One of the most powerful depth cues is this kind of shading, uh, how the light falls and reflects and, and bounces off uh, surfaces. That tells us a lot about the shape of the surface. And therefore, uh, that gives us a lot of clues about the, the relative depth as the surface kind of bends around. So this is, in fact, a, a uh, kind of Escher-esque uh, impossible surface um, where you can see the lighting here conflicts with the lighting there. And what's interesting is we don't, in this case, uh, immediately detect the conflict. And so we kind of locally process one side, locally process the other side. And then when we try to put it together in a, in a more coherent frame overall, that's when we notice the conflict. So our visual systems are not perfect in integrating the whole scene. Uh, you can kind of do this kind of part-wise part interpretation as well.